I've got the power. Remember that song? Power. It's the ultimate prize or is it gift that anyone can want to have, whether in your home or as a leader. As a leader, we'll be looking at African leaders especially. Of course, touch a little bit about or uh, on some other leaders outside Africa, but basically with our dear continent Africa where we have leaders or is that rulers, whichever you want to put it, that have the ultimate prize to actually serve the people with the power and provide what they need. Is that the case in Africa? We'll be looking at one or two instances and see if it's really ideal for Africa to be in charge or to be in power for a very long time. Maybe for even forever. <laughs> you can even die on it. Really? What are we doing, Seth? We'll be back. What are we doing, Seth? So, Africa has lots of leaders in the individual countries that stay so long in power. You, the question you ask is do we what? I remember when I was young, much younger than now. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh -huh. They tell us the leaders of tomorrow. Well, okay. As you can see, my beard doesn't really look as thick as before, right? It's all mixed up, it's all kind of colors, okay? Get to see someone that has been promised that till date to be a leader. You're getting old, that's what it means. What are we doing, Seth? Okay, and right now, we are faced with a situation in some, a lot of African countries that they just hold on to power, should I say, for their life? <laughs> Check it out. Most African countries have leaders that, you know, they have the opportunity, they had the opportunity, whether they forced to get it, they were democratically elected or whatever, they get into power and that's it, they don't want to let it go. Yeah, we all know the adage that says, you know, power intoxicates. But this intoxication, does it actually last forever? Or is it power actually gets you addicted? Okay, you tell me. Hey, because I don't know, okay? Now, let's look at some of the countries that have, that have leaders, rulers, whatever you call it, that have been there for a very long time, and yet they least provide what the country actually needs. So it's more like a family business. A whole nation put in somebody's pocket because he or she has the ultimate power and do whatever he likes. Now, don't tell me that there are some countries that, you know, that uh, have long reigning presidents, head of states, or leaders, or whatever you call it. But the difference is, unlike the African countries, these leaders, they actually do a lot for their countries. Basic amenities are provided. Okay? Now, I'm not, I'm not saying that it's a good thing to be powerful ever or you know what, what what have you what i'm just saying is there is always the ability to be better when power is transferred when you make power not to be a private business or something you think that uh, you can hold on to or you think you are the best for over 40 years and you think no one else comes close to uh, be better than you i mean i really what are we doing seth Okay, so, but what I'm saying is, especially in the African continent, you have a lot of people that cling onto power, especially the leaders, and they don't want to let go. And as if that is not bad enough, they don't provide what the people need. And they don't want to let go of power for somebody else to try. There's this guy, Puro Nasingbe. He's been there 15 years, right? Been a while. What has Togo really benefited from it? Yeah, the president of Namibia has been there 19 years, okay? And uh, you have uh, Ismail Omar that's been there 20 years. That's uh, from Djibouti. Then you also have Eritrea, uh, Isaiah Afweki. If I don't pronounce it well, sorry, you can always look it up. That is about 27 years. Then you also have uh, from Rwanda, Paul Gigami, 20 years. Okay. You have Idris from Chad, 29 years. Uganda, 35 years. That's Museveni. I've been hearing that name forever. Then you also have Congo, 36 years. You have uh, the, the one from Equatorial Guinea, guess what? 40 years and counting. And of course, Paul B, I've heard that name forever too. 44 years. Take that away from my age. I was really little when I started hearing that name. Now, what, what has the country gained from such leadership? That is the key here. Now, I know some people will say, oh, okay, how about... The president in uh, Iran or 
you know, in Russia, I said Russia is about 17 years, there about, Iran is about 30 something years. But like I say, here's the difference. In Africa, most of the leaders, what have they provided compared to the non-Africans? All right, you can tell me. The basic amenities, I'm not even going as far as, you know, huge infrastructural ability and empowering the people and all of that. Just the basic infrastructure. How many African con uh, countries, especially in the East, South, you know, West, have actually provided what they need to be provided as basics? Lights, roads, jobs, you know, make life much better, the, you know, the, the health and all of that. So they're countries and they've served so long. I've got the power. Yes, I know. But what have you done with it? Is it for your business, for your pocket only, or to actually serve your country? You tell me. Power. Power to the people. Uh, well, I don't know about that in Africa. I'm yet to see where there's actually power to the people. The elections, if we go on smoothly, and it, does it actually go on smoothly? Or is it a matter of do or die? <laughs> what are we doing, Seth? The irony is we've just made, you know, compromise a lot on our life, on the way we should live, when the whole world, guess what, is actually relying on Africa to survive. We have the best resources that is rich enough to be enough for everybody, really, without fighting, without holding on to power or anything. You know what, I'm like, I was a bit curious. Number one, that is the highest current leaders who have served for the longest amount of time. Number one is from Africa. Paul B. I've told you I've heard that name in quite a long time, decades. He's been there for over 40 years. And his next is another African country, Equatorial Guinea, 37 years. You have uh, Angola, number three, 37. Uh, number four, Mugabe, 37. Uh, Iran, well, I know that's not an African country. That has served for 35 years. Then you have uh, Kazakhstan, Cambodia is 32, Kazakhstan is 33. Then you have Uganda, a lot of African countries. 30 something years, 40 something years. Watch this video. What are we doing, Seth? Okay, I'm just focusing on Africa, right? The African race have come of age. I think it's about time we don't make power as a private business. No, in your country. If you know, look at developed countries. I've seen presidents, and I'm sure you guys know, when you're not, you know you don't have the capability, and there's so much pressure, people don't like you anymore, step back. It doesn't stop anything. It doesn't change your life. Let me twill a little bit, but for you to have gotten to that level, you must have achieved a lot for yourself too, right? Most times when you earn power, you should be able to, you know, do something and let go for others. Because nobody is perfect, even you as a leader, right? <laughs> I don't see why you cling on to power for a long time and yet nothing really happened. Coming to talk about Nigeria, I should give Nigeria kudos. Because in Nigeria, it's not in the list. What does that tell you? At least, if for anything at all. We try to hold on to power though, hey. But we let go. So our name is not there, Nigeria, but that's a good sign. That's a good thing. Okay. And is it okay for one to aspire regardless of the age? I think so. You can, if you have your dream of being the president of your country, even when you are, I mean, in your 70s, your 60s, that's fine. There are some world leaders that are that age and they achieve their dream. So there's nothing wrong achieving your dream, regardless of what age you attain. The question is, when you achieve your dream, in this case, power, what do you do with it? Do you not say, oh, at last, I'm on top of the mountain, nobody else is going to come after me, or I'd rather die there. Is that what it is? to have power, all right? So, power in Africa. We have power, right? But do we also have service? Question, all right? Let me get your take on this, folks. And before we go on, 
Watch this video. What do you think about the video? Now, that is someone, I'm not going to mention any name, but the video can say it all, okay? You do your own research. Imagine, somebody has been in power for a long while, okay? Now, he doesn't want to let go, he's been there, and he's aging. You know, some folks, some parts I'm hearing, maybe he has a shortage of memory, health issues, but you still don't want to let go of power. <laughs> you tell me. So, is power intoxicating? Is it addictive? Or... What else? Is it worth it? So you tell me, well, after watching that video, if you are someone in leadership, if you think you have done enough, and you, or you think you cannot do more than what you can, let somebody else try. Hey, after all, you pray every day to God, right? God has the ultimate power, but he has provided so much for us. He has provided so much, and he has given us freedom. Take that as a warning note, and see if you can do that yourself. It shouldn't be that hard. Power, everybody. I like to be in power as well. How about you? Whatever position you see yourself, give it your best. When it's time, just go. It's okay. Everything is going to be all right. All right, folks? Don't forget to subscribe and uh, comment. Give a thumbs up. Please also share. As we move on with this show, thank you for those that have subscribed. It's been awesome. We will all keep, yeah, keep keeping on. And always remember, do unto others what you want others to do unto you. Power to the people. Bye-bye. What are we doing, Seth?